What's good everyone, today I'm going over the 7 best free to play money makers you need to know about if you're trying to get a bond. I've tested all the money makers within this list on my free to play to bond series which I highly recommend checking out after this video for more general tips on advancing your free to play account. But anyways guys, that's enough about me, let's get into this list. Okay, so starting at number 7, we're going to be buying feather packs at the fishing shop in Port Sarum. The great thing about this method is that there are no requirements except for some starting cash to buy the feathers with. Anyways, all you do for this method is buy 10 feather packs, click on one, wait for them to open, and by that time, the shop should be restocked so you can just buy another 10 and repeat. You can do this while doing other stuff too, like high elking, which will increase your GP per hour here. But just buying the feather packs will cost you about 550k for the full hour, and you'll get about 260,000 feathers every hour, which can be resold on the GE for 3 GP each and a profit of about 220k an hour. Now that's pretty damn good, but the reason this method ranks last on the list is because, well, I mean, you need half a mil just to do this method for an hour, which is kind of a lot in free to play. And the other big thing is that feathers are one of the restricted items that requires you to have a certain amount of playing time and in game achievements. So just keep that in mind if you start this method on a brand new account. Next up at number 6 we got killing imps at the Karamja volcano area. And there are no requirements for this but I'd recommend bringing some food if you are a low level as the imps and scorpions around the volcano can attack you. In general it's best to stay on the western part of the volcano to avoid the scorpions if you are a low level. So anyways this is a really common spot for imps to spawn and they drop things like beads, blue wizard hats, and mind talismans which can all be resold on the GE for a profit of somewhere between 60 to 80k which is really Really good for people looking to train combat while making a little money. So yeah, I'd say this is a pretty good method overall, even if you don't make that much GP, as combat is normally not really profitable anyways to train in free to play, especially at low levels. By the way, it's also worth noting that you can also kill imps just next to Falador, which might be a little more competitive and a little bit smaller of a spawn rate, but you're at least really close to the Falador bank here, which is nice and just a good alternative spot. Alright, so at the fifth spot, we're going to be making dyes with Aggie and Drainer. The only requirement for this method is the corresponding item and some gold used to make one of the three primary dies, and you can just buy these items off the GE. And then you might also want to consider investing in some energy potions, as maintaining your run during this method will actually increase your GP per hour, and you only use like 45 potions in the hour, which costs about 11k right now, so really not too bad and definitely worth the investment in my opinion. Alright though, for the method itself, you're basically just running back and forth between the Drainer Bank and Aggie making dies. I tried out each die for an hour, and yeah, you can see how much I made of each color. The wiki says you can make over 1200 dies an hour, but I found that really unrealistic and intensive, so expect about 1000 dies for yellow and blue, and then 600 for red. Anyways, after the dies finished selling, I did the math, and found that the red dies are the most profitable right now by far. Far. However, if you're watching this video way in the future, I would recommend checking the GE prices just to see if things changed. Overall though, this is a pretty solid method, but the big downside is that the dies took forever to sell in the GE, so maybe just do this method for like 20 to 30 minutes at a time so it doesn't take forever to sell. Also really quick, just want to say if you're enjoying this video, please hit that juicy like and subscribe button as it really helps me out and I'll give you a nice little kiss. What? Alright, so coming up next, we're going to be telegrabbing nature runes in the wilderness. This nature rune spot can be found just right of the lava dragons, which is in really deep wilderness, so just be careful with what you bring out here. Personally, when doing this method, I like to bring about 15 minutes worth of casts at a time, so that's like 100 law runes, and then a full inventory of food and an energy potion in case I get PK'd out here, which there's like a really solid chance will happen eventually. Anyways, you can make over 200k GP an hour here while getting some magic XP, so that's great, but there is a chance you might get PK'd and lose some money, so just be careful out here. 
But yeah, there's really not too much to this method. Let's just get on to the top three. All right, coming up next, we're going to be reselling plate bodies to the Varek Armor Shop. And this is another method that can make you a ton of GP, but requires a bit of a starting cash, as basically you'll want to either smith or buy these three plate bodies, and you want to make sure you get them for a price less than what I have on the screen. Anyways, all you're really doing here is reselling the plate bodies and then hopping worlds, and I like to sell the iron plate bodies until the stock hits 15, steel plate bodies until the stock hits 6, and mithril plate bodies till the stock hits 4, and then hop. And with the current GE prices on these plate bodies, you could theoretically make up to 800k an hour reselling these plate bodies, which is just nuts. Also, as a little bonus, you can do this at the Varric Sword Shop too, but with swords obviously, and you'll profit a little less here, like 400k an hour roughly. Now these GP per hour rates sound great, but there are some big issues with these reselling methods, like that you need a decent cash stack to get started, there's a GE buy limit for these items, with the chest plates in particular, it's 125 every 24 hours, which is pretty low, and when actually doing this method, the worlds can be competitive with other players trying to resell their own plate bodies to the shop which can ultimately hurt your efficiency so yeah although the 800k an hour sounds great it's unfortunately not really realistic to do it over a long period of time all right next up at the number two spot we got buying empty jug packs at the drainer wine shop similar to the feather pack method mentioned earlier the only requirement for this is a starting cash stack like about 90k will get you through a full hour which really isn't that bad and after an hour of buying and opening these packs you can expect expect about a hundred thousand jugs then you'll want to go to the GE and resell these jugs for about 4 GP each and on average you should profit like 300k an hour which is insane and in my experience doing this method on the free to play series the jugs really didn't take that long to sell like a hundred thousand jugs took about four to five hours to sell fully so pretty solid there now the other great thing about this method is that it should be consistent forever in the sense that I think the jugs will always resell for four GP, making this a reliable 300k an hour. Now the main downside with this method is it doesn't train any of your skills, and I guess it can sometimes take a while to sell on the GE, but it's never super unreasonable in my experience. Alright, so finally at the number one spot, we're gonna be crafting jewelry, which you can do at any furnace in the game, but I'd recommend here in Edgeville just cause it's nearby a bank. Anyways, you can start doing this method as early as level 5 crafting by making gold rings for a small profit and then slowly level up your crafting level to unlock more profitable jewelry. As of right now, crafting emerald rings is the most profitable item in free to play, but don't worry, I know prices change a lot, so I'm going to link in the description a great wiki page which updates the profitability of each craftable item in real time. So yeah, you can expect to make about 1200 of whichever jewelry piece you end up choosing, which means you You'll also get a good amount of crafting XP. In the case of Emerald Rings, you're gonna get about 66k crafting XP an hour, which is honestly pretty damn solid. But yeah, there's not really a whole lot else to this method. You kind of just craft jewelry. It's pretty AFK too, so you can like binge shows or my other YouTube videos or something. <coughs> like and subscribe. Anyways, guys, that's gonna wrap up the video. Let me know in the comments how you think I did with this list. And if you enjoyed the video, please consider leaving a like and subscribing as it really helps out. Finally, I just want to say check out my free to play to bond series if you haven't already yet just for more tips on building your free to play account and eventually getting that membership. But yeah guys, have a good one and I'll see you in the next video.